What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game I just need a little a bit of advice or well, for those of you out there who want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of who to sign for guys oh i've got to do it because it's what bad. we've seen recently what? is not signings making the news with this club but sales instead yes you'll know who it is fc porto of the primera liga in portugal uh very very great season for porto domestically last year winning the domestic double both the league and the cup but Tough week for Porto fans last week, no doubt about it. Announced that Vitinha is going to join Paris Saint-Germain and Fabio Vieira is going to leave to Arsenal. That is such a tough few days for Porto fans. Two of your best young players, both academy lads, leaving in the space of a week. Tough, really tough. So I thought, why not do Porto and uh, see what signings to make with them instead of sales. Now, Porto are a four-star team in the game, and they're a brilliant challenge team as well. Now, if you want to do a team outside of the traditional top five European leagues, Portugal is probably where you want to go to, no doubt about that. There's some great talent in the Primera Liga, and Porto have quite a bit of it as well. They might be about to lose Vitinha and Fabio Vieira, but they've still got several other players here, some of which through the academy, they've got great potential. You've got Diogo Costa, the starting goalkeeper, Conte Acau, the uh, manager's son, of course. Then you look at the likes of Evan Nilsson up top, Jao Mario, the right back, Otavio, who is now in his mid 20s, but still one of their best players. It's a really good team. It is a four star team. It's not the best, but in the Primera Liga in Portugal, you saw last season winning the domestic double. There's no reason you can't keep success here domestically at the fabulous Estadio Dragao, which is, of course, in the game. Challenging for European titles, though, that's more of a long-term thing. So it's, it's a great project to go into, because in the first season, you want to see the objectives there. They're really tough. You've got to win the league title. You've got to reach the semi-finals of the cup. And the toughest objective of the lot is the Champions League. Reached a quarter-finals in the game. Porto could not get out of their group, because it's a tough one. It's a really, really tough group to reach the quarter-final. That's a real challenge in Season 1. Now, with Porto, as you'll see, um, their team is a nice mix of players in their prime. Uh, a couple of ageing players and also some good young talent as well. There's only one player who's deal at come the end of the year. That's Chancel and Ben, but I would give him a new contract. At 79 overall, he still grows three ratings to 82 overall. And he will be a star centre-half for all the years you're at the Dragao, or so you'd think. Uh, but in terms of sales with Porto, I'd also rec uh, recall one of your lads out on loan as well. The midfielder there, 80 or 80, 29 years old. In terms of sales with Porto... Well, I alluded to it a moment ago there, there's some amazing young talent here at Dragao, but there are also quite a few aging players that need to be shifted on. One of which is Ivan Marcano. I definitely would sell him in the first season. He's, he's an okay squad centre-half to have, but at 34 years old, you can get better and you can get younger. And I'd also recommend selling Pepe as well. That's a tough one. He's back at the Dragao for a second stint now after leaving Real Madrid. But... Whilst he is captain, whilst he is high rated for a Premier League player at 82 overall, well, you know this guy's been around the block a few times. Yeah, he's 38 years old. And yeah, <laughs> at the end of the day, whilst he's starting overall, makes him one of the best in the team. At 38, he's going to decline absolutely rapidly. Yeah, his decline's going to be so steep. You won't even see him fall. He'll be so far down the floor in season one. The end of season one, I should say. You want to sell him as soon as possible because you know come the end of season one, he'll be like 77, 78 rated. You need to sell him as soon as you can and get as much as you can. We are going to sell him to Sevilla for £7 million. Uh, Marcano. We accepted a £2 million bid from Granada initially. I forgot it was a bid from Espanyol, but... We negotiated the same fee here uh, with uh, the uh, lads from Barcelona as well. And also uh, Ramos as well. Uh, he's a third choice goalkeeper in this Porto team. 29 years old and as you know, you've got Diogo Costa, one of the best young goalkeepers in the game at 77 overall with 85 potential. You don't need three good goalkeepers in season one. So you might as well sell one of the three. You're not going to sell Diogo Costa. It's up to you who you'd sell. Um, either the backup or the third choice. I'd sell the third choice person. You've got four mil from Bologna. It's not a 
bad deal. You're not going to use him. He won't play a minute all season long. You might as well have the cash. But in terms of new signings with Porto, well, I mentioned a moment ago that this is a really good challenge, Porto. One of the reasons why is not just because the objectives in the first season are quite tough for a four-star team, but also because it's not a lot of money with Porto. Yeah, you got around 17 to 19 mil based on wage budget alteration in season one. That's not a lot. And if you want to improve your team and bring in some good first team quality, well, 17 to 19 million isn't going to get you far. But with Porto, where would I recommend strengthening? Well, the midfield's really good. Porto have always had a class midfield. So you don't need to bring in new midfielders here. Up top, you've got Evan Nilsson and the Iranian striker. You don't need a new forward either, but you've got to improve the back line. Pepe, 38 years old. You'll probably sell him in the first season. If not, he'll decline very quickly. You'll notice at fullback, you've got a great talent in Jao Mario, but on the other side, not what you call an amazing left back starting in the team. He's okay, but you can get better. And my recommendation would be a former Porto Academy graduate. Yep, had to do it, right? I mean, gonna, they're going to sell two Academy grads in this window. Got to bring one back, surely, right? Sanusi's not a bad left back. You know, 24 years old, 75 rated. But you can get better and you can get younger as well. And Diogo Dalot, he spent time playing both right back and left back in his young career. Very versatile fullback with a four-star weak foot. What I would personally do is bring him back from Manchester United. We swapped out Wendell to soften the transfer fee. So it was 17 mil plus Wendell. He's a new left back in for this season with Porto, who isn't great and personally I would just swap and just get him out of the club as soon as possible but lot at 78 overall he's only 22 years old and again he's got a four star weak foot which means he can easily play left back I'd swip him to left back keep Jao Mario at right back put him on a defensive wide back development plan or the inverted wide back based on whether you want to get the five star weak foot for lot or get the defensive work credit from medium to high you can do both very quickly in season one because he is just 22 years old and again with 84 potential I think he'll be a starting left back with Jao Mario on the right for all the years you're at the Dragal in terms of replacing Pepe uh, again it's very tough with Porto because there's not much money to work with. You've got to use your pennies wisely. Now, if you can afford him, Goncalo in Afio Sporting Lisbon is surely your number one transfer target. But the likelihood is, because Porto's budget is very limited, you'd have to look elsewhere. There are a few players I'd recommend. You can get Bubakar Camera from Marseille for around 22, 23 mil. If you're lucky enough to have that money left over after the signing of the lot, you can bring him in and then convert him to centre half. You've got Luis Felipe at Lazio, who's 79 rated with 84 potential as well. Unfortunately, in this save, it's signed a contract extension, so a bit out of my budget. But the one player I definitely would recommend, if you're keeping a nice Portuguese feel, is this guy right here, Domingos Duarte. If you're watching my La Liga career mode right now, you'll know he's a key member of our first team in our back line. He starts off 78 overall, but this guy has got some deceptively really good stats. He's six foot three, so he's very tall. And what you'll notice here is he just needs a little bit of guidance to make him a really good centre half. He might be 26, but don't be put off by that. He still grows three ratings to 81 overall. And you'll see, defensively, his stats are brilliant. They're so well balanced. They're all around 80, which is more than good enough for a Premier League centre-half. All you've got to do is get his low jumping stat up, train his defensive work rate up from medium to high, and improve his low pace. And you can do that all on one development plan, which is stopper. The stopper development plan trains up the defensive work rate. So in one season, he'll go from medium to high. It improves both the sprint speed and the acceleration to improve his low pace. And he'll get the jumping up. To. Yeah, Duarte is a great base centre half. And as a long term success for Pepe, you might sit there and think, well, he's four ratings lower than Pepe. Yes, but he's 12 years younger. And come the end of season one, when Pepe's around 78, 79 overall, Duarte will be higher rated around 80 to 81. The final signing I made with Porto uh, was just another young Portuguese talent here. Uh, Rodrigo Gomez of Braga already played a few times at senior level, senior club level, I should say. He's a young winger that's 18 years old. His skill moves is only two, but he's got a bit of pace about him um, as a young teenage winger. You can get him for around 1.5 mil. I didn't have the full scout report on the guy, but I know how much he's worth. He's a, he's a very decent young dribbler of the ball. And as a reserve winger, a young Portuguese talent, just someone to keep your eye on as the years go by. Won't play much in season one or season season two but it's always nice to get some good young talent isn't it so with Porto in the end as you can see we only raised 13 million for our sales but we spent 35 and a half million on Duarte de Lot and the young winger Gomez as well but you look at the age of this team I talked about selling on those older players Ramos a third choice goalkeeper who wouldn't play a single minute in the first season behind Marquezine and also the young goalkeeper Diogo Costa 
not worth keeping, might as well get the cash. Pepe is going to decline rapidly, and Marcano, simply put, isn't good enough in this team. All three of those players, 29, or in the case of Pepe, 38, and Marcano, 34. The young players coming in, Duarte in his prime at 26, then you've got Delon at 22, and a young winger too. Yep, we made his Porto side much younger. Might not be much better, but certainly better for the future. So as per usual, we're simulating the end of the season, see how Porto would get on in our first year at the Dragao, and as you can see... Well, as we came towards the end of the season, I felt very confident we won the Primera Liga, just like Porto did in real life. And as for the cup as well, we won that too. Yes, beat Sporting Lisbon by three goals to one. Our objective in the cup was to reach the semi-finals. But really, with this Porto side, you should be targeting the domestic double year after year. That's what Porto won last season in real life, and it should be what you target. If you only win one of the two, that's okay. It's not a, a tremendous failure, but... There's no doubt about it. This is a fantastic Porto side. And in the Primera Liga, Benfica will be your main rivals for both the league and the cup. Of course, the long-standing rivalry between the two of the teams. Benfica are the most successful team in Portuguese football history. But Porto have got enough ability in their side to beat Benfica for league titles and cups as well. So you should be targeting a domestic double year after year with Porto. It'll be tough, don't get me wrong. Because both teams have a great amount of talent and good first team quality too. And they're two of the strongest sides in the league. But it definitely should be what you're targeting. So with Porto, as you can see, we won the league title by 10 points. And won the Taca Portuguesa, uh, which is the Portuguese uh, cup, if you will. Uh, beating Sporting Lisbon 3-1. The failure did come in the Champions League, though, as you'd expect. It was an expected failure, if you will. The group features Atletico Madrid, AC Milan and Liverpool. You've got the Serie A winners, uh, you know, <laughs> a brilliant Diego Simeone side. And Liverpool, the Champions League finalists and last year's domestic double winners. I mean, it's it's a tough group, let's be honest here. But I had to show you this as well. You might have missed it initially. I had to go back and make sure my eyes weren't deceiving me. Did you see St. Pat's go to the last 16 of the Champions League, get through the group featuring Chelsea and Juve? That was incredible, man. I had to show you that. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me at first, but no. But yeah, with Porto, the, the European objective was a failure, getting knocked out in fourth place. But really, again, you got to be realistic here. The board might say quarterfinals, but in season one, I would literally say if you're doing a Porto uh, career mode, in season one, literally just scrap the Champions League. Like, just throw out backup sides. Because the fact of the matter is, Liverpool, Atletico, AC Milan. Getting through that group is going to be a very, very tough task of your four-star Porto team. So really, I wouldn't even focus on it. Board might say quarterfinals. I'd say sod that board. We're going all out for a domestic double. So yeah, in the end with Porto, as you can see, we hit both of our domestic objectives. Well, hit one and exceeded the other. And I really like the new size as well. Uh, the lot grew four ratings uh, at, eight, at 82 overall at just 23. Domingos Duarte grew three ratings to 81 overall as well. So you know come the end of season one, he'll be far better than Pepe and 12 years younger, of course, as well. And the young wing we signed grew three ratings to Rodrigo Gomez, the young teenage talent. You won't use him much in the first couple of years. With 85 potential, he'll grow into be a really important member of your team as the years go by. But Porto are a great team to do a fever career mode with, though, man. Seriously, fantastic young talent. Amazing history of bringing through young players. They're in a unique league in the Premier Liga. You've got a really strong domestic rivalry with Benfica and also Sporting Lisbon as well. But of course, if you want to start winning the big European prizes in the Champions League too, it's an RTG. It's a great team to manage, man. It's a good challenge in Season 1. But it's a really fun team. I definitely recommend giving them a go. But that would end today's episode of your sign for, guys. Big fan. You're fortunate if you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For. Very soon.